All right, we are we are live on YouTube. Uh oh. Okay, so this is Warren Redlick. I am here with my friend H Bomb, also known as Heather Kane. Heather and I were chatting last night, and we have something of a bet. I am a huge fan of Tesla. I think Tesla is a great investment, and I think Tesla is going to go up in value tremendously over the next five to ten years. Heather is a big believer in Bitcoin. I am also a believer in Bitcoin. I'm not down on Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. I just, I'm not as confident about crypto's growth and I'm very confident about Tesla's growth. So I thought we'd have a conversation from an investing perspective. I think Tesla's, Tesla's a great investment. You think Bitcoin's a great investment. Why do you think Bitcoin's such a great investment? Well, I think all cryptocurrencies are a great investment, but particularly Bitcoin because, um, you know, it is just one of those assets that is responding to what exactly is going on in the world today with all the um, money printing and the QE, infinity. And I think we're going to see Bitcoin really take off in the next couple of years because of that. I, I think that uh, as Paul, I think it was Paul Tudor Jones said that Bitcoin is going to be the uh, fastest horse in the race. Okay. So I, I feel like it's a good opportunity for everyone to get in, especially right at this point, because it's still in those infancy, infancy stages, stages where, uh, you know, you can still get enough for your value and uh, really do well in the future. So what is, it, what is it about Bitcoin that makes you think it's valuable and why you think it's going to grow? I think it's valuable, number one, because it's a scarce asset. So Bitcoin is kind of like, it's a store of gold, essentially. I mean, it's a considered, it's considered like a store of gold in terms of it's scarce. So with Bitcoin, every four years, there's what's called the halvening. Yeah. And what happens is they cut the amount of coins that are being produced uh, within a certain period of time. So if like every 10 minutes, say five coins are produced, they're going to cut that in half eventually over time. It would be kind of comparable to like gold mines that are um, that are cut in half. Like all of a sudden, all half the gold mines in the world shut down. So that scarcity is really important. And there's only 21 million bitcoins that have ever been um, produced. And as a result, I think, or will ever be produced. And I think that will kind of keep the, um, there'll be a deflationary effect of that. And it will kind of keep it in, um, it keeps it from getting too inflated or too deflated, which is exactly what's happening with the money printing right now with the fiat currency, like the dollar. Okay. Okay. And what was the other part of the question? I'm sorry. Well, I'm just trying to figure out number one, why is it valuable? And number two, why do you think it's going to grow? I think it's going to grow through adoption. So I think cryptocurrency as a whole is going to be adopted. I mean, I think it's going to make, I think the, it's, it's kind of limitless in what it can do. Um, it's gonna, it's just going to infiltrate too many different areas of our life. It's gonna infiltrate banking. It's gonna infiltrate payment systems. It's gonna infiltrate finance and um, e-commerce and uh, remittance banking. So like, you know, if you need to send money over to your relatives in Ecuador, it's gonna help with that. It's gonna help with fragile uh, economic economies like you know places like Argentina where the um, the currency sucks and they need to find some other form of currency be that Bitcoin or maybe a stable coin like uh, Maker Dow's die where they can at least invest in something that they consider stable enough that they can go out and get their milk and eggs and not have to worry about starving because their peso is worth nothing okay. so I I think it's gonna really affect so many different aspects of our lives so let me let us let me go with this. First, first of all, for people who just came in, I'm Warren mm -hmm. Redlick. This is my friend Heather H. Baum Kane. We're talking about whether Tesla, I, I think Tesla is a better investment over the long haul than Bitcoin, or I think it's a great investment. Heather thinks that Bitcoin is a great investment over the long haul. And uh, Heather just explained that Bitcoin's valuable because of scarcity and it's going to grow for various reasons. Um, I think Tesla is a great investment because it's a growing company because they're making really interesting and new and novel technology. Uh, I'm particularly a fan of the robo-taxi concept, that robo-taxis are gonna become widespread, that 
the value to the owner of a Tesla that the profit over a 10 years, let's say a 10 year life of a Tesla robo taxi might be $500,000, which means a Tesla that's currently selling for $50,000 is really worth $500,000. And if you're Tesla and you're making a million of these $500,000 cars a year, that's a huge amount of revenue and it's going to grow as they build more and more cars. But when, when we talked last night, we, uh, Heather and I are friends and neighbors. When we talked last night, you have this theory that the entire stock market basically is going to tank at some point and it's going to take Tesla down with it. What's your explanation for what you think is going to happen to the stock market sometime in the next however long, year, two years, whatever? Okay. So I've been like doing, a, so I like micro, macroeconomics. So I've been doing a lot of research right now on that. And there's different theories out there. Like Brett Johnson has this great theory. It's called the milkshake theory. And what he believes is that the way it works is the Fed puts out the dollar and it goes through this pipeline system. Kind of think of like um, an oil pipeline system to all the different countries in the world. And what will happen is as our dollar continues to get stronger, it'll cut the heads off all the other different currencies out there, the other fiat currencies. And because of that, everyone will start to pile into US equities and into the stock market and the dollar will continue to get stronger and stronger and stronger until it basically runs, runs away, away with itself. With itself. So, so what will, what will eventually, eventually happen is there will be have to be like a, a, um, a plaza accord 2.0, so to speak, where, so to speak, where all, all the countries, countries around the world say, no, 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 no man, we can't, we can't, we can't do this. The U.S. can't continue to do this. this. We need to either make a new deal and peg the dollar to something else. Which, which, you know, could be gold, gold again, again, which they big, big governments, governments never want to do because, because gold kind of holds them back. Them um, back. Or, or potentially from depegging it from petrol oil, oil we, we might, might consider pegging it to data. data. And, that's and that's why I'm, I'm so big and bullish on uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin and, and all, all the cryptocurrencies out there is because if we peg the dollar to data, it, it makes sense, sense because we're, we're moving, moving into, into a digital, digital age, age and our, our technology is just ramping up and getting faster, faster and faster. And that's and why I think, you know, cryptocurrencies will do really well uh, in the long term. They, 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 they will revolutionize everything. You'll, you'll be able, able to make your transactions eventually, eventually not, not now, but eventually, eventually you know, in, in seconds. seconds. And, and it will just, you know, it, it, it will work. So, so I see right now with that dollar going all the way up, the plaza cord being put in place, what will happen, and, and, it, and it could be next week, it could be a month from now, it could be three years from now. I don't know, but I see once that plaza cord of some sort being put in place, the stock market's going to go from a melt up to a complete meltdown. And we will go, we will go into um, stagflation, probably, is what I'm thinking. And that will be not so good for our economy because, um, you know, that's just... That's just the way these things go. And I was talking to Warren about this yesterday and the fact that um, there are some people who consider these cycles to be normal. So like every 50 years, we have a new cycle. Hey, Heather? Yeah. Um, I just got to ask you, I'm getting comments from viewers that you need to turn the volume down on your computer so it will reduce okay. your echo. Okay. Is that better? We'll see. We'll, we'll find out in, okay. a, in, a, in a minute or so because it will take time to get answers. Okay. Can you still hear me? I can still hear you. Okay, let's, can you hear me? Yes, let's go ahead. I was a teacher, so I talk loudly. <laughs> okay, no, you're good. That's, that's, that's why, too. All right. Um, so what was I saying? Oh, just about the cycles. We have, we have cycles in the, in the economy, in the stock market, and every 50 years, roughly, a cycle changes. Um, uh, there's this uh, thesis, I think, written by Artemis Capital. His name's Chris or Coleman, and he describes it as the serpent and hawk theory. So every 50 years we have uh, the hawk come in and it takes out the serpent. So the serpent is basically a good period of time where you see lots of growth and the stock market booms and people get rich and do really well, and after a while the system becomes too big, too large, certain people are just too rich, and there's too, too much disparity between the haves and the have-nots. And as a result, that's when the hawk cycle comes in and it brings in inflation or deflation. And it basically is like a rebirth of the, the stock market, essentially. So I think we probably should have had that happen around 2008. 
and uh, they kicked the can down the road, and now we're there. We 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 have no choice. We we we're entering this hawk cycle. So I would encourage everybody to take a look at their portfolios. Understand that the 60/40 portfolio is not going to necessarily work in this new environment, and like do your homework and start to consider alternative assets. And that's why I'm bullish on Bitcoin, and I and I am bullish on gold too, but particularly cryptocurrencies. That's why I'm bullish on on Bitcoin and crypto. Okay, so again, for people who are new to this, uh, we're talking about whether Tesla is better than Bitcoin as an investment. Um, you don't have a particular beef with Tesla as compared to other stocks in the stock market or other traditional investments, right? Not at all. I mean, I I do think, I think, I think Elon's way of running his company is, you know, a little bit, he likes to over leverage himself so that he can continue to grow. I mean, it's just one different model than another model. So I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I think Tesla is a great company. I personally love, you know, futuristic stuff. I mean, I'm, I'm the kind of person who as a kid grew up watching Star Trek and Star Wars and want to see the future, you know, come into reality and I think he's what you know one of those kind of people so I, no I love Tesla would I buy Tesla stock right now no I would not I think it's way overpriced I think that like I said after that meltdown that happens then I would consider buying some Tesla stock but not right now you, you, um, see, a, you see a market fall and the opportunity is to buy stock when the market falls and buy it you know buy low and sell high right now it's high you think there's gonna be some kind of turn, downturn well, I do. I don't know if that's in three months or three years, but I, I do think it's going to happen. Okay. So the market, the market is not normal right now. It's not running normally. I mean, think of it this way. Um, you know, we we decided the government decided to shut the economy off like a light switch. It just said, okay, we're shutting everybody. Everybody go home. We're shutting everything down. Well, by doing that, they had to put the market on life support. So you know, the Fed is you know totally printing tons of money to push it into junk bonds to push it in and start buying ETF eventually ETFs eventually and I think that the market is so unnatural right now I mean yes they're trying to claw back to or have almost clawed back to original highs of you know the past they haven't obviously gotten up to the original highs of 2008 but um, I just I think that if you go with Brent Johnson's milkshake theory, we will go to all new time highs. Okay, let me. We very, let me, we very well might. Let me just but, let me just ask you for a second. We had a question from John Benstead, who asked, "What if the Treasury turns the dollar into a cryptocurrency?" And that I think you said something like that last night when we were chatting. What? Yeah. Okay. What is the so potential the dollar, for that? The dollar. This is how I see it. I think the dollar, and this is not like today or tomorrow. This is probably years down the line, 20, 30, 50 years down the line. But I think what will happen is we're not going to choose another fiat currency like, you know, the Chinese uh, yen or uh, yon, uh, I can't pronounce it. And, um, I can't either. <laughs> and I, I just don't see us going that way. That doesn't mean that the Chinese won't continue to buy up all our um, real estate here in America and we will have uh, issues with them but I don't see us going that direction what we're gonna do is we what I would guess is we in the 1971 Nixon untied us unpegged us from the gold standard then we got pegged to Petro so my guess I would assume is that instead of getting repegged to the gold which we, we could do temporarily if they absolutely had to but if it's only because of cryptocurrency is not ready by then but if it's ready by then I truly think that in you know 20 30 50 years down the line we're gonna get pegged to data so I think that the dollar will be pegged to data okay let me pause you for a second uh, yes. we just had a question from vicious circle and this kind of relates to how I think about your and my disagreement uh -huh. um, he says, I think you will be missing out waiting on lower lows. Yes, we are in a strange time in the stock market and it comes with uncertainty. And the, the issue is if you're waiting for the market to bottom, it could go up 2x and then drop 30%. And if it you could. bought at the low, you would have bought higher than if you bought now. So how That's do you, true. I mean, when, when you're playing a timing game, I don't know how you avoid that. I think you're right. I, I, I think it is a timing game and, and I guess I am playing a timing game, but I mean, you got to look at, at the grades and, and, you know, 
Buffett's not in right now. He says he's waiting for the market to come to him, essentially. Um, David Tepper is saying now is the time to um, to kind of conserve your wealth and, you know, not try to go out and, and you know, just make a fortune, like conserve it. And I think if you listen, and like, like I said, Paul Tudor Jones thought that Bitcoin is going to be the, the fastest horse in the race. Uh, he also thinks that, uh, you know, two-year treasuries are pretty much the way to go and the NASDAQ 100. I think these guys know what they're talking about, because I certainly don't. But um, I think that they're all playing it to play safe. They're playing defense. They're not playing offense right now. So I think when you are, you know, choosing to go, you know, in a speculative route, you might get caught and then you really lose everything. I mean, that's the thing. You just don't know. I mean, I don't know. Okay. So, um, oh, what did he say? Sorry. So actually, one of the things that you said earlier, we were talking about crypto and there's one of the... Yeah. There, there are reasons why I think crypto and Bitcoin in particular is valuable. And yes. you mentioned remittances. Remittances is one of my mm -hmm. favorite things about Bitcoin. Me too, people, me too. For people who don't know, remittances are you're from Guatemala and you mm -hmm. move to the United States to make money and you mm -hmm. want to send money home to your family. And yes. if you do it through Western Union, which is, I think, probably the preceding most common way to do it, it takes mm -hmm. at least a day. Um, there's very high fees. Um, your family member has to go to a Western Union location. If there's a crime issue, if you were going to rob people, you'd stand outside the Western Union and rob people coming out of Western Union. Yeah. So there's sort of a bunch of issues there where if you do Bitcoin, the tran I think Bitcoin transactions are slow in general, but for remittances, they are right now. but for remittances, 15 minutes is fantastic compared to Western Union taking a day. Yeah. So I think it's actually very good, and the fees. You know, there's a cost to a Bitcoin transaction. I personally think Bitcoin transaction fees are fairly low, depending on how big oh, the transaction nominal. is. But they're when, nominal. But when you're comparing it to remittances, it's even better because remittances are expensive. So I think that's a great example of how Bitcoin has huge value. Are there other, the word I would use is use cases. So I know common use cases for Bitcoin are drug transactions, you know, certain online transactions. What are the biggest uh, areas where some forget about the, the wealth and the hold of store of value part, but as a transactional currency, where does Bitcoin shine most for you? Okay, I mean, well, there's like I said, there's so many different areas. Let's go back to remittances for a minute. I want to finish that. So, um, I was listening to a podcast a while back with um, Raul Paul and Dan uh, Moorhead from Pantor Pantera, Pantera Capital. And they were talking about the remittances. And I think it's such a beautiful thing because Dan was saying that, you know, it's like it, these poor people that come in and work and they, they want to send their money over to grandma in Guatemala, they're paying 10% of their paycheck just to send it over. And that's a, that could be a month's worth of wages. I mean, it's, 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 they're really getting uh, taken advantage of. And I mean, you could argue that they shouldn't be, you know, sending money out of the United States and everything. But, uh, I think that with the remittance companies that are coming in, like BitPizza, um, I can't think of the other ones. It, they're on the top of my brain, but they are—they're—they're um, they're like the cost is so nominal. We're talking like I think two or three dollars, as opposed of you know like hundreds of dollars, depending on what you're sending over. You, you know, so and then on top of that, it goes it with Ripple or something like that. It will go over there in a matter of seconds let alone a matter, a matter of minutes, once the scalability has been reached. So, so like we're still in those, you know, toddler infancy stages of cryptocurrency where we're just not fast, it's not fast enough yet, but it will get there. It will get there and it's going to be so good for them. So now where crypto shines in terms of, I'm sorry, what? In terms of transactions, it shines as a transaction currency for remittances. Yeah. Some people say it's good for drugs or, you know, illegal drugs or whatever, but where do you think Bitcoin shines as a transactional currency? I think you know, well. I think it's just like like we talked about scalability. It's a little too slow right now. I mean, Bitcoin has the Lightning Network, so it's going to speed it up. I mean, you're going to see Bitcoin in your everyday life. You're going to see cryptocurrencies in your everyday life very shortly here. If you go, all the cousins of Bitcoin are your PayPal, your Venmo, your Cash App. Cash App in particular, Square, Jack Dorsey. 
he just um, literally his company Square just purchased fifty uh, percent. I think his company in Grayscale purchased fifty percent of all of Quarter One's Bitcoin uh, for yeah for Quarter One. I mean that's a that's a heck of a lot of Bitcoin. So when you start to use PayPal, when you start to use your Venmo, you're going to see Bit. Bitcoin and using the Satoshis, obviously not a whole Bitcoin, but using the Satoshis as a way of payment and you'll receive payment rewards through Visa. So it's going to come faster than you think. The main thing to take away with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin is that you own your own money. And th this, is the, this is the part that I think people get so confused about. It's very simple. If you go to the bank right now, you hand over your check you hand over your income, whether it's wired in, however it gets in there, you put your check down, the bank only keeps a certain percentage of it in your bank account for you. That's called fractional reserve lending. So let's just use, for example, $100. If you plump down $100 and say, here's my $100 bank, take it, keep it safe for me. They're only keeping $10 of that $100 in there. The rest of it is an IOU. So that money goes out and is farmed out to other people for loans and, and whatever else. And that's kind of how the system works. When you own Bitcoin, when you own a stable coin like um, Tether or USDC, or eventually it'll be the US dollar because the, the government's going to be centralizing one. When you own a stable coin, that stable coin is yours and yours only, meaning that no bank controls that. So they, you know, there will be less fraud because of that. There will be less um, uh, governance will be better. Well, let, for me, instance. let me ask you about that for a second. A couple of there have been a bunch of comments and I'm going to I'm going to read a couple of them real quick. Um, one person said it won't work until we have quantum computers for security reasons. He asked if we if you agree. I don't agree with that. I think security is already good. I think it's um, starting to work now. Um, I don't think it's. A, oh, this, is, this is the one. The, the one, one of the questions, this came from Vicious Circle, which I thought was kind of a good question. I think somebody else asked something similar was, okay. is there a danger to Bitcoin that either the banks or government will somehow interfere and prevent Bitcoin from succeeding? No, that's the whole point. That's what makes it so good. So we've had this discussion before. The reason why Bitcoin is so good, and, and like I said, it's, it's got to be mass adopted. People have to believe in it, just like you have to believe in the, in the dollar. Okay, it takes belief. You know, back when um, Native Americans, you know, used to trade, they traded in seashells and such like that and beads. So you have to have a belief system in whatever your currency, your money is. So, oh, I lost my train of thought. So anyways, what were you asking again? I'm well, sorry. So why, why is Bitcoin safe? Oh, why is it safe? Bank or government interference? The banks. Okay. So, cause like we, when we're talking about remittances, yeah. banks make a lot of money on remittance fees and other transaction fees and Bitcoin takes away money from bank fees and governments exactly. don't like Bitcoin because they, they well, I think governments can't control Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. so therefore governments won't like Bitcoin and they'll try to, and I think they're already trying to interfere with Bitcoin in a big way. That's a, they, I could, I could yeah, tell stories yeah. about that, but I think, they try. but I, you know, I think to some extent, at least Bitcoin is ultimately invulnerable to government manipulation and bank control. What do you think yeah. about that? I think governments are going to have a really hard time uh, fighting Bitcoin. If people choose to adopt it, if it's a bottom-up adoption, they have no choice. And the reason they have no choice is they have no control over it. They cannot control it. That's going back to what I was telling you about the bank with the money. So if the banks control your money, they have the power. If you control your own money, you have the power. So Bitcoin is controlled the way it works. It does, it's not controlled. It's controlled by you. You have your money. Your money is put up into the cloud via the blockchain, and so the, the blockchain, blockchain. Is very, yeah. yeah, and via the blockchain. So the blockchain is very hard to to uh, try to hack. And let's be clear about this: I don't need, when pardon? you say the cloud, it's not an Amazon's cloud, it's not Microsoft's no. cloud, it's not in Google's cloud. It's in this blockchain that's you know not controllable yeah. by any one company or any one power. So I like to think of this way: I I, I heard a quote somewhere, or I read a quote somewhere. I think when we look back in a hundred years. The, the internet will be the ground. It will be our ground, our platform for the cloud that is presented upon that. That's, that's what's gonna live up on top of that. And in that cloud, you will have everything. You will have your, your money, you will have your health IDs, which we could get to later. Um, you will have you know, all your gaming, all your business transactions, everything you buy, everything you eat, how your companies are run. 
everything that's of value to you, you will have in that cloud, essentially. So the reason why the governments can't access your Bitcoin is because there's no way for them to get to it because it's up in that cloud. And there are so many thousands of, of miners, which are you know computers running, that could not be shut off. All, I mean, the only way that you could ever lose your Bitcoin is if all the power in the world ever shut off. That's the only way. Okay, let you me, have to lose all the power in the world. Let me just talk about how I see government trying and banks trying to control Bitcoin and not succeeding, but trying. Yes. So I have done, I don't do it so much anymore, but I have received payments for a particular service I offer on the internet. So I mm -hmm. get these payments and I get them. Um, I'm going to say that there's two Bitcoin worlds. Okay. Yeah. There's what I call the dark world, which is not mm -hmm. subject to government control. What mm -hmm. happened is government under the claimed fear of money laundering, which I think is a, is a phony crime, but that's a, a different conversation. Under that claimed fear of, of money laundering, government decided to crack down on people who were trading in Bitcoin. And mm -hmm. Coinbase and some other companies said, well, wait a minute, we'll make a legitimate version, a quote, legitimate version of Bitcoin, where you can know your customer. Know your customer is this big concept so that we can mm -hmm. prevent money laundering. I don't yes. believe money laundering is a crime and if somebody committed a crime charge them with the crime not with the money laundering but money laundering is, is happening with the regular dollars the hundred dollar uh, bills sure. the twenty dollar bills they're not happening with bitcoin it's so nominal i but, mean it's not even but worth this it. is where this is how government has tr is and government and banks are trying to control bitcoin is just saying well wait a minute we'll force most of polite society to use the cleansed money laundering safe version of bitcoin through coinbase that's and, centralized. You know, I use Electrum. I used to use local Bitcoins. I used wallets that were not subjected to that monitoring. I, I never, didn't play at any high level. We're talking about fairly small transactions, never had a, a lot. I currently have 0 0.7 Bitcoins. So I'm not playing at that mm -hmm. high level. But yeah. it makes it very inconvenient to be in the dark world if so-called legitimate vendors have to play in the world of light. And what happens is... If I take take Bitcoin from my dark wallet on Electrum and I transfer mm -hmm. it to Coinbase, Coinbase closes my account because they can't verify the source of my Bitcoin, which is yeah. the whole point. Or it's one of the major advantages of the blockchain is the anonymity, and they're trying to take away the anonymity. Well, and anim yes, you're right. Anonymity will grow as scalability grows. As I think that. As these companies develop, there will be more anonymity for those who want it. We're going to have two different crypto environments, like you said. First of all, the reason why the government doesn't want or didn't want cryptocurrency to succeed is because how are they going to use the dollar as um, a weapon, you know, if they can't control the crypto? So that's so. But now they're starting to realize, well, we could still use the dollar as a weapon if it is a centralized dollar. That's why you'll be seeing the U.S. dollar come out in a crypto form. That's centralized. That's the one that's going to be, yeah, paying your bills. You're going to be going to the mall with that one, if there is malls at, at the end of this pandemic. But <laughs> that's, the, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the one you'll be using for your everyday. The reason why Bitcoin is more important is the same reason as gold. It is decentralized. You can hide it. I mean, the only reason, the only way they could take it, you know, is in the 1930s, they came into your house, they took your gold, right? Right. Uh, they really couldn't do that unless they came in your house and they found your Trezor wallet, your Nano Ledger wallet. So, but if you bury it like you buried a gold, they can't find that. Even better, if you destroyed those and you put your seed password in your brain until yeah, there the is <laughs> mind control, they're not going to be able to find your your Bitcoin. This just That's why I'm a big proponent of Bitcoin. And I really am a proponent of it, too, because you don't know what the future brings for your children, your grandchildren and, and, and whatnot. I mean, so no. forget the, you know, get rich for us, even if you want to maybe leave something for your children or grandchildren so they have a fighting chance in the future. That's why I would choose Bitcoin. Let that's why just, I'm um, Bitcoin. Something we talked about last night connected dots in my brain just now. And I just want to bounce something off you because we talked about this a little bit last night. Mm -hmm. One of my theories is that the US that the Chinese economy is rising. Yes, the US economy is not rising as fast or currently shrinking. And uh -huh. Maybe already the Chinese economy was bigger than the US economy. That's an open question. Yes. 
But if the Chinese economy becomes more important to the world economy than the dollar, then we could head towards a world where the Chinese currency becomes the world's reserve currency, the dollar loses its reserve currency status, and the dollar collapses. And where I'm going with this related to Bitcoin is I can now see where the U.S. government might all of a sudden have an incentive to favor Bitcoin if the mm -hmm. alternative was the Chinese currency. And yes. the Europeans might all of a sudden decide, and the Arabs, all of a sudden Bitcoin, yep. if the dollar loses its reserve currency status, I think there's this question, if you were running the Fed or running the U.S. government or whatever entity, you know, European, Arab, whatever, would you rather that the Chinese control the money or that no one control the money? And I'm exactly. not sure the answer is no one. I think no, they I might think the rather have no the Chinese one. control the money. I think the answer is no one. I think that's what Libra was. That's what people didn't understand. And that's why the government freaked out was Libra was a set of essentially crypto baskets that are tied to the dollar. You know, I mean, you can think big. It could be tied to our U.S. stock market and all our businesses. It depends on how you want to think of it. But basically, that re represents your 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 wealth as a nation. And yes, you you trade with Europe again. You trade with, you know, I believe France is creating their digital currency right now as we speak, too. It's under wraps, but I believe they're doing that. And I know we are, too. I know we are because uh, uh, Steve Mnuchin, he hired on comp controller uh, Brian, I don't know, I can't think of his last name right now. Anyways, the guy used to work at Coinbase. He was one of the top execs at Coinbase, and now he's a uh, comp controller for the Treasury Department. They're working on it. They're creating it. It's coming. And I think that's why they're doing it is because they'd rather have a crypto dollar than have to have a different, like you said, currency that is in control, like the digital, I mean, like the um, Chinese, okay. for instance. Really quick, somebody asked a question. I think it was 635574. He uh -huh. asked about, he mentioned something about BCH instead of BTC. And that one's over my head. What? I, that's... BTC is Bitcoin, what's BCH? I don't know a lot about it either. I know it's, I think it's a fork of Bitcoin. I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not super knowledgeable in all my cryptocurrencies. I'm more knowledgeable of what uh, the crypto sphere could do for the world, I guess, you know, the ma the more macro. I mean, I would stick with Bitcoin personally. I mean, if you want to look at some other ones, you could look at like uh, Ether and, you know, Ripple, I think Ripple will do a, amazing. I don't, I have different feelings on Ripple. Ripple is going to try to replace the SWIFT payment system. SWIFT is what we use right now. When you put your credit card in the machine and it transacts the data and you pay your money, that's what SWIFT does. So SWIFT in, and Ripple are either going to kind of somehow merge or Ripple's going to try to take it over. And I think Ripple's going to be big. Whether you want to get it at the IPO when it eventually, um, you know, has its, uh, joins the stock market or if you want to buy the tokens but so um, what are the advantages of ripple as compared to bitcoin it's a speculation rip bitcoin's a speculation too but bitcoin it all goes back to bitcoin as a store of wealth okay just like gold it ha it's a scarce asset so let me explain i guess i need to explain this better so if you have gold the reason why gold matters is because it would take 64 years for you to mine all the gold in the ground that there is above the ground right now. That's what makes it scarce. If you um, had silver, I think silver would take 28 years to mine all the silver in the ground that's the silver above ground. And, and same with, you know, diamonds is 16 and everything. Bitcoin is going to get scarcer and scarcer and scarcer. It will be the most scarce uh, asset in the world eventually. Let's be clear about that. There's a certain amount of Bitcoin out there. There are Bitcoin miners who are mining Bitcoin. I think you just told me about the halving that they used to mine 12 yeah, Bitcoins a day and now it's six so Bitcoins a day. So how many Bitcoins could be mined in the future? So there's 21 million Bitcoins and they've already lost a bunch of them. We don't know how much have been lost already. And it will probably all be mined, I'm guessing like 2130, something like that will be the very last Bitcoin will be mined. So way after we're all dead. But um, we've already mined like 85% or more. So, and there's already been four halvings. The last halving was May 11th, it just happened. Well, do we just end up with, do we end up with more and more halvings so that you, you never One halving, you never every, halving every four years. It's in the mathematical equation. I guess this is the thing. People expect 
the, the reason why they're always like, eh, I don't know, but Bitcoin is kind of shady because you expect a company to roll it out with the red carpet. You expect people to buy into it, into, you know, like this company's backing it. It's oh so fabulous. The guy or people, I would say a guy, but maybe two people, three people that created this, they, they wrote this white paper that's so genius. I don't even understand it. But they wrote this white paper that's so genius and they gave that knowledge away to the world for free. It's kind of like the person that probably invented the wheel and gave the wheel away to the world for free. It's a game changer. And whenever you have some sort of game changer that revolutionizes the world, it creates um, movement and productivity in the world. So that's why Bitcoin is so important. That's let just, why. It's let me just pause you for one second. I just want to say, because yeah. we have more viewers now, <clears throat> for okay. those who came in late, Heather, Heather's my neighbor, Heather H. Baum Kane. And Heather and I were talking last night, and we have a loose bet that I'm a, I'm a big investor in Tesla. I also am a small investor in Bitcoin, but I'm a big investor in Tesla. Heather is a big believer in Bitcoin. So our bet is that if you have $50,000 in Tesla stock today versus $50,000 in Bitcoin today, that in five years, I say the Tesla stock will be worth more than the Bitcoin. Heather says that the Bitcoin will be worth more than the Tesla. And we don't have any money. We don't have like this is like a. We we'll have, we'll have to figure out what our. There's no stakes. Know, this is yeah. What are our stakes? This is a bet we'll of honor. Or maybe yeah, dinner. We have some stakes. Maybe maybe we'll, we'll go see. out if we can go out to dinner. If restaurants are allowing customers. Five years from now, we better be able to go out. the other dinner, and not just exactly. not just us. It's the whole family. So I buy your family but, dinner. You buy my family dinner. Perfect. Perfect. And hopefully we're that both right, and they both go up by a huge amount, and we're spectacular. Exactly. So exactly. let me just look and see what other questions or comments we had. Um, so so w just to, to take my side of the argument, Juan Araluz says, Bitcoin is pure speculation. Tesla builds things. That's the difference. So I'm going to take Heather's side for a minute and say, while I agree that Tesla builds something and that's a substantive difference, we talked earlier in, the, in this uh, live stream that Bitcoin provides a means of transactions that is better than some other methods of transactions in some circumstances. Mm -hmm. And it is arguably a better store of value than say the dollar. Um, so I'm gonna take, but what, what comments do you have about, well, Bitcoin is purely speculative. They don't make anything, Tesla makes things. What, how do you respond to that? Okay. Bitcoin is, okay, there's two Bitcoins here. Where, that's, I guess that's the thing. There's the invention, which I was talking about a few minutes ago. And there's the actual coin, which is the store of value. The invention itself is the game changer. That's the that's the white paper I was talking about with with um, blockchain. the blockchain and everything, which will redefine the world. Whether you like it or not, it's going to change the world. It's like me telling you, you know, before cars are invented, look, there's a car. This car will redefine the world. And you're like, hey, I don't know, whatever you're talking about. I've come to notice that whenever someone says it's gonna rot your brain out this thing's never gonna happen guess what it tends to happen so look at video games they 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 have changed the world uh, people started hacking uh, Wii's and when they did that uh, Nintendo Wii's they they built drones from that and drones now are getting so fast and powerful that they're gonna you know eventually help firefighters and and first responders and you know deliver packages which are already doing now in Seattle you know from Amazon and and China. I think my girlfriend got a package the other day so anyways with innovation with with a frivolous idea comes innovation whether you like it or not I guess with some something someone just want to tinker, tinker or play with like electricity you all of a sudden have the whole world light up so in terms of it being a speculation, yes, it is still a speculation if you look at it that way. It is a risk asset, but it's still going to change the world, whether you like it or Let's not. Be clear, it, there are... it all depends on if people believe in it enough. If people don't believe in Bitcoin enough and something does come along better, that is a crypto of some sort, then yes, that might be the big winner. But no matter what, I can tell you without a shadow of doubt, I truly believe that cryptocurrency, the crypto sphere, will revolutionize this world. Yeah, it's kind of interesting when you said that you kind of triggered something in me because I see Tesla as revolutionizing not only the auto industry, but beyond the auto industry, that you're going to see self, the self-driving cars that the dramatically lowering the cost per mile will mm -hmm. wipe out mass transit. It will wipe out trains. It may wipe out airplanes. It's, it's it, the potential, mm -hmm. it'll wipe out, you know, people who don't know, I'm a personal injury lawyer and a, and a criminal defense lawyer, and 
easily half of criminal cases start with a traffic stop where the police pull over a driver for doing something wrong. And half yep. of my business is people getting in car accidents. Well, safe elect robo taxis will mean there's no accidents. So it, it, it's de it potentially revolutionizing a variety of things beyond the auto industry. And like you yep. said, Bitcoin and crypto in general has the potential to revolutionize the financial industry, not just not just the financial right. it, it can right listen exactly. here, I, have, I have a list i have a list it will rev, it will revolutionize banking payments investing exchanges finance uh anonymity e-commerce cross-border payments which we talked about the remittance uh it'll have faster confirmations for anything for whether you're you know trading an e-trade or, or whatever it is uh it'll stabilize some economies like we talked about like argentina or venezuela or places where their their currency is going to crap. I mean, and it will lower. This is another one I want to talk about. It will lower currency risk. So, what we have going on right now with all the money printing and potentially even one day we might have bail-ins, which I don't think Americans are quite ready for and don't even know what they are. I mean, if you have a stable coin, and it doesn't have to be Bitcoin because Bitcoin is not stable. But if you have a stable coin, you won't have to worry about that. Listen, the the FDIC insured. You know, I've, I had this conversation with my mom the other day ago, and I was talking about it. And the FDIC insure only insures a hundred; it has a hundred and fifty billion dollars to insure nine trillion dollars. That's not enough, okay? So if you feel your money is safe there, great. I don't necessarily feel that way. I think that you know you have just as much chance with a stable coin. Um, there are stable coins like Tether. And USDC, of course, there will be the new stablecoin coming out by our government that will be centralized, which will be the U.S. dollar one that I talked about. I mean, the banks are going to have to start working again. They've taken advantage of us. They just assume we're going to be their clients and customers. It's not going to work that way anymore. They're going to have to sweet talk us and, and dangle some sort of carrot for us to come to them. So these stablecoins offer, you know, uh, one, and a, one and a half percent um a um, AYP. Um, they offer uh, if you lock up your stable coins, um, they can offer up words of eight percent. I mean, that's some serious interest interest when you're saving, when you want to save some money. So you know, and we're going to negative rates right now. It's just a matter of time before the Fed and the government issues negative rates. So your hundred dollars in your savings account will now be worth ninety five. You know, you've got to start thinking of options that. This is what I think the government is intending to do. They're gonna they're gonna go to the negative rates because they have to because the because the stock market's gonna throw a tantrum if it doesn't and and that's the only reason why the stock market will continue. That's one of the reasons the stock market will continue up, is because we talked about that strong dollar that's cutting the heads off all the um, the other currencies, but the the negative rates will have to come because the yield curve keeps dipping down too low and as it dips down too low, if they don't cut the rates. You know, you know, the stock market's going to take a take a downturn, and oh no, we can't have that. So we can't let it healthy correct on its own. So the negative rates will push will push it up. Now, if you don't want to lose, you know, um, you know, five dollars out of your hundred dollars or ten dollars out of your hundred dollars that you save all the time, your hard-earned money, then you're going to have to look for other options. Okay, and that's. That's what's coming. Is those st the stable coins are already here, but eventually the banks will follow suit and they will start to offer that as well. Okay, I'm, I just put on the headphones to see if that helps with the echo because somebody complained about the echo. I don't, okay. I don't know whether it's me or it's on your end. I'm not sure. So okay. um, somebody said I can get headphones too if you want. Do you want me to? Not, I can no, always not go right now. Okay. It can't be that bad because people aren't complaining about it that much. It was just one little thing. We'll see. Uh, okay. Fipe said it, so we're trying it. We'll see if it's better. So okay. what is this? Uh, uh, there's a bunch of questions. Um, oh, yeah, I remember what I wanted to ask you was, or somebody had said, well, how do we know Bitcoin is the right investment as compared to, say, Ethereum or Ripple or whatever? There's other uh, cryptos you could invest okay. in. And my, my thinking on this, and you and I kind of agree on this, is Bitcoin sort of has first mover advantage. Bitcoin is the best known. It does. It's, it's not that it's a sure bet, but it's the best bet. And then, you know, like, Let's compare it to, I think we could talk about Ethereum and others, but let's compare it to Libra. Facebook had this, floated this idea of Libra as a, as a cryptocurrency that was gonna advance. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't even remember what happened to Libra. 
Libra disappeared. It's still going, but Libra disappeared from sight because the government put up such a stink about it because they were afraid that it would. Um, our dollar is used as a weapon around the world. That's that's what we we do is we bully everybody with our dollar because everyone needs dollars. They're all short dollars, especially with our swap lines that we've created with our our friends around the world. So between the dollar and the euro, we use those two to bully everybody around the world. And you know, China and Russia are sick of it. They they're their example of sick of it. And so is maybe Iran and North Korea and and on and on. So when we form swap lines, we make our friends, which is, you know, it's it needs to happen. And the reason why Bitcoin is, I lost my train of thought again. What was the question? So the Sorry. question is, um, you and I both agree that Bitcoin has sort of first mover status. It's yeah. the mm -hmm. best known crypto. So it's oh, the most they were likely to survive. So, the dollar. I, you know, the one I the know Libra. second best is Ethereum. Libra is out there. You know, Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook was floating Libra as a cryptocurrency. As far as I can tell, Libra's out there, but it's not making much progress. Is yes. there what's the next what's the next most likely crypto to take over if Bitcoin doesn't doesn't take isn't the number one? No one's going to take over Bitcoin anytime soon because it's just so far ahead of the game. Now, Ethereum and Polkadot. Polkadot is coming on right now as we speak. It'll be here sometime this year. Uh, Polkadot was um, given all this money, millions and dollars by you know VC funding, and it is going to be Ethereum's big player to, to fight against. So like you know, kind of like remember Google and Yahoo during the days. So it'll be interesting to see which one does better. Um, but in terms of Libra, it's it's there. It's it's still trucking along. I think all the big players opted out. It's kind of like they all had they're all like sitting at a poker table and they all had their cards, you know, kind of abreast. And when you know push came to shove, they all showed their cards. And Visa dropped out. I think uh, you know I think uh, Amex dropped out, and all these players kind of dropped out. So. I think they got scared of what the government would do, just shut it down. But I, I still think that at some point there will be a cryptocurrency basket like Libra that will be eventually someday, 50 years down the line, 100 years down the line, that will be what the dollar is pegged okay, so rather than, than another um, uh, uh, currency that's, you know, uh, reserve okay, currency. So let me let me bring this back to Tesla for a second because the title of our okay. live stream is Tesla versus Bitcoin, and I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna make this sales pitch for why I think Tesla, as much as I think Bitcoin is, is like I said, I hold some some Bitcoin. I think it's a decent store of value, a good transactional thing. Why I love Tesla. And one of the things we talked about last night was your husband is thinking about getting a new SUV, right? And I, I he wants yeah he wants a Model Y. I, I, I encourage him to like look at the Model Y. And, yeah. and the sales pitch for the Model Y, he currently has a Mercedes SUV that he bought a couple, maybe he bought a couple years old. Um, yeah. Is because you can charge it in your garage, you never, you almost never have to go to a gas station because there's mm -hmm. so much lower maintenance. You know, you don't have a muffler, you don't have an oil filter, you don't have an air filter. Um, there's a lot of things that you need to maintain in a gasoline powered car that you don't need to maintain in an electric vehicle. Because it's mm -hmm. going to have this robo taxi feature that I think is coming. We we talked about this. You don't think it's going to be a while. I think it's next year, but whatever. No, I think I think robo taxi is not coming first. I think it will be automated. Um, uh, you think truckers uh, supply deliver trucks? trucks and it'll be like it'll be like your Amazon, right. your autonomous Amazon truck, your autonomous uh, FedEx okay, truck but, that will be coming so, first, and there'll be bike lanes. Right for that and then you'll have a worker that comes up and brings it to your door and then someday a robot. So my theory is but, yeah, and one of your at least one of your neighbors we live on uh to the, the next we live on the next street from each other at least one and i think two of your neighbors have tesla model threes already and they i do. one mm -hmm. of them brian has taken me for a ride and i've actually got behind the wheel of his model three and drove it on self-driving this is several months ago and um mm -hmm. i think it's going to happen really fast and what happens is I want to make the case for the value of Tesla as a company. I actually, I, I, I'm going to be making a video soon where I'm going to argue that Tesla will stop selling cars. That, that okay. the cars will be so valuable when Tesla is making them as robo taxis that it will make more sense for Tesla to own them as robo taxis than to sell them. Okay? Possibly. And so, They'll definitely destroy Uber. And, but here's uh, the argument, okay? If 
if huh? they deliver a one million mile robo taxi, the car it'll go a million miles with minimal maintenance. You got to replace the tires, maybe the windshield wipers. I'm not sure you even need to replace the windshield wipers. That's a long conversation. If you're not driving, you don't need to see out. Just the cameras need to be able. You to will, see. no no no. You'll have autonomous uh, windshield with yeah. uh, your Skype call. We'll be doing this while right. we're driving. So, we won't have to. But drive. So what what ends yeah. up happening is if it's a. a a million mile vehicle and it is able to make 50 cents a mile in profit which i actually think is an underestimate in the short run then a million mm -hmm. mile vehicle a million mile vehicle making 50 cents a mile in profit means five hundred thousand dollars in profit for that one vehicle if you're making mm -hmm. five hundred thousand dollars in profit for that one vehicle and your tesla well you're not if the vehicle is going to generate five hundred thousand in profit then you don't sell it for fifty thousand dollars you sell it for maybe four hundred thousand dollars because it's going to take you know 10 years to earn the profit and if you're tesla and you're making a million cars a year and i think they'll be making more but let's just assume they're making a million cars a year times five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars in profit a car that's five hundred billion dollars in profit a year and then they start making two million cars a year then they start making four million cars a year and Tesla goes from a market cap of roughly 150 billion. If you're making, let's say they're making, I literally think they're going to be making a trillion a year in profit. Okay, just a trillion yeah. a year in profit a year. And then you assume some level of growth and a price equity, a price earnings ratio of 10. And you have a $10 trillion market cap. It's like an 80x. 60 to 80 X increase in share price from today. I, I bought in, by the way, the share price today is around 800. I bought in at mm -hmm. three, my average share price is 320. So I'm like ecstatic about where this is heading. But I genuinely- And I think inflation will rise with the stock market. Your stocks will be worth more because your inflation will be worth, worth, I mean, the inflation will cause the stock market to rise. This is an 80 X increase means a Tesla share price of 64,000 up from 800. Mm -hmm. Yes, 64,000 share price, which means I, I will be retired comfortably. All, and one of the rough things for people who are watching is all of my Tesla stock is in IRAs. So I can't touch it until I'm 65 and I'm 54 now. So if, I, if I'm right and in five years Tesla's share price is 64,000, I'm going to be really wealthy in my retirement fund and really poor cash wise because I don't have any other money. So that's my pitch for why Tesla goes up. So let's so my optimistic case is a Tesla share okay. price of 50,000, 60,000, something like that, maybe more. What's your optimistic case for the Bitcoin? Bitcoin is currently trading around 9,000? I think it's 9,5 this morning I looked at it. It was 9,5 okay, this so morning. So what's the, what's so the optimistic Bitcoin, case? The Where's first it going? Having, okay, so let's, let's do this. The first having, I think it was at $12. The second one, it was at 400. The third one, it was at 3,000, and now it's at eight. It, 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 this having on May 11th was at 8.5. So it's it's com obviously going up, and every, you have your having, and then about a year and a half later, roughly a year later, you know, it spikes, it goes up. If Bitcoin was to take off, it's, it, there's, you know, this phrase that goes around, it's either worth zero or it's worth a million. If Bitcoin was to take off and it was a bottoms up adoption and you know people in argentina adopted it people in venezuela adopted all the poor countries adopted it you have game theory going on no one can shut it off as we already discussed because um you know just you like the oil for instance right now no one can shut the oil off you can't shut the you can you can try to you know slow down the process of it but no one's going to shut it off this you know saudi arabia's not going to shut it off america's not going to shut off so anyways, you have the game theory no one's going to shut it off no one's going to shut bitcoin off and it takes a hold and it's been believed in. I think you will find that by like, you know, the last coin I think I said will be, uh, the last real full coin will be mined maybe, t or maybe just the last of the coins will be mined in 2130, something 2030, like that. 2030, I think you said. Yeah. No, 2021, oh. it's gonna be a while. A long time, 2130. Okay. So, so I think the last coin is like 2130. If the world adopts Bitcoin. Let's just to say, let's just assume it did. If it, it would be billions. Each coin would be worth billions because everyone adopts it. And there's only 21 million coins. So if everyone piles in around the world, around the world, it won't be worth a million. It would be worth billions upon billions, trillions wow. perhaps. 
trillions, trillions. That that would I mean I'd even say trillions. And I think that you would you know toward the end like you know in in 2100 or something like that, you know the last couple halvings there. Um, I would think that people would celebrate each having like it would right. be like Christmas. Well, it would go. be a, it would a, it would be like a full Christmas, you know, like the around the world something that everyone celebrates that every four years, kind of like the Olympics. Well, everyone let's, let's not go five, let's not go a hundred years from now. Let's go five to ten years from now. Where okay, five to go. ten. Okay, I would venture to guess, and this is a guesstimate, but I th there are models out there suggesting um, stock to flow models with um, Plan B on Twitter. He thinks it'll be a hundred thousand within uh, the next couple of years. Okay. So one coin will be a hundred thousand. That's that's the rough. So next year you're looking like next Christmas, twenty nine thousand. Okay. Following Christmas, you know, forty in the forties, you know, and then so on and so on. So because the way someone described it interesting, the pattern, the stock to flow ratio, the way it works is it's like you know a tier system, and it's kind of like the the drunk guy wandering around holding on to his dog leash it might go up it might go down a little bit but no matter what it still follows that path it's because it's it's a mathematical equation it follows that path it's just a matter of adoption 90 percent of all the monies all all the money in the world is in institutions 90 percent so if you have people like paul tudor jones giving it the thumbs up i mean that's huge he's saying it's the fastest horse in the race Let's go for it. Let's let's put a little bit in. Let's put that one percent in. That that you know one or two percent in. If inst institutional investors start to pile in, it's game over, man. And yes, it will take over Tesla. And I'll, I'll just you know, it'll my, be worth more than Tesla. My my reason why I think Bitcoin will go. I, I even though I think Tesla is a better investment, I do think Bitcoin will go up. And my theory is that we may face a dollar collapse. And not just do the dollar. It may be a euro collapse. There may be other countries where yeah. the currencies collapse. And mm -hmm. in a world, and I hold, I also invest. In, I have a small amount of investment in gold and silver. Um, I and think right now that, is the time to buy gold. Right now is yeah, definitely the time to buy gold. But, but when, if the dollar collapses, if other major currencies collapse, the as long as the power doesn't go out, which is Bitcoin's biggest vulnerability. But I don't see the power going out worldwide. Um, yeah, whole world power goes out. You've got bigger problems. Now. We have bigger problems than where we invested Seriously. our money. But um, gold and silver and Bitcoin are sort of, and what did somebody say? I, I think I wasn't talking, he was talking to somebody else and they said, the thing about Bitcoin is that it's the best hedge. That it's- Yeah, it's, they're hedges against inflation. But it's not- They're hedges against deflation. But it's not, it, it's the least correlated with stocks and bonds and other assets. Like even gold tends to move that. somewhat. Was it you? Maybe it was you. It was me, uh, I told you that, um, yeah. That there's this issue with if you're going to hedge, so Bitcoin is a great hedge. So that's another reason people will hold it as a share of value, as a whole, as a store of value, is because it hedges against things that happen elsewhere. Yeah, brilliant. It's, that's it. So David Tepper, those people I've been talking about, the the greats, um, with the exception of, but well, Buffett. You know, Buffett did say in his um, meeting, he said he used the word Fort Knox. So maybe he's considering some gold for as you know as his play for uh, what's coming up with this hawk cycle that's coming in where you know inflation deflation hyperinflation comes in so you've got to put your money somewhere where you're going to it's going to be protected it's not about at this point it's not about accruing wealth it's just keeping your wealth let me let me ask you to explain so, the serpent and the hawk cuz i think you you may have explained it briefly before but please go into that more what is the serpent and the uh, hawk story okay i I should get my, I need to get my phone for this one. But basically, I'm going to have to turn on my phone. Well, uh, what you were saying is like the serpent is a good cycle and the hawk ends the good cycle, something like that? Yeah, they're different. Yeah, so the way it works is, and this is natural. It's a natural occurring cycle that happens in the world in the stock market. So some, I think this guy at um, Artemis Capital, that's where you can research this, he wrote this thesis about the hawk and the serpent. And the way it works is, and uh, George Gammon also on YouTube, he goes over it too. So the way it works is that every 50 years or so, we have a new cycle that starts in the economy. And you need to prepare yourself for that cycle because it's gonna change the way things work. So an example of a hawk cycle coming in would have been around 1920s. So Right at 1920s, we had what was called the Silent Depression. Most people don't know about it. And it was a real quick depression because there was, the Fed wasn't there to intervene. It didn't, it didn't mess with it. 
So it was kind of like the Band-Aid was ripped off. The, there was this V-shaped recovery because it went down and then it went right back up. But then in the 1930s, the one we know as the Great Depression, which you know really got all the news headlines and was a big, um, you know, really sad event for people. And like my grandma still used to talk about it. What happened was, is the Fed got involved. The Fed started money printing. I don't know if they did QE, but they started money printing and they were the ones that actually caused the Great Depression. If you go back and Google, it had to do with uh, maybe MMT. I can't remember what caused it, but the Fed actually caused the Great Depression because they were screwing around with the economy. And as a result, uh, then they, because they probably felt bad that they screwed around with the economy, they tried to fix the economy, so they started money printing, which obviously led to the debasement of the dollar, which, you know, all of a sudden your dollar is not worth anything, jobs get lost, and pretty soon you have a huge problem on your hands. Now, yes, the dollar was pegged to gold, too, and it was, I believe, pegged to gold incorrectly. And if you look back, um, I think Winston Churchill also had that problem. When he... Uh, repegged England back to the gold standard, or, or he had to readjust it. They they did the math wrong, and when they and then when they did the math wrong, they had like a depression too, or a really bad recession that they went through. So it's very important that when you peg a fiat currency like the dollar, like any paper money or paper currency, we, sh we shouldn't even call it money because it's not money, it's currency. When you peg something to something else, you have to make sure you do it correctly. So the hawk. And the circle, the hawk and the serpent, the hawk comes in after a serpent cycle. So we are finishing, we finished a serpent cycle. So the serpent cycle, we could argue, started around 1980s. And, you know, some people made a lot of money from the 1980s till now, till 2008. The, the, the hawk cycle should have start, started in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 2008, really, when we the had Fed, that um, the, crash, that that should have been it. That, but but the Fed was able to, you know, intervene and kick the can down the road and offer stimulus to uh, the stock market and elsewhere in the economy and kind of just send it drugs to keep it going and pumping, essentially. Yeah. So the hawk comes in and it destroys the serpent because everyone, it, it starts out good. Everyone starts to get profitable. If you look at the graphs, you know, you do really well and things are going great, but then there's this disparity where the rich get richer, the poor get poor, and the disparity becomes too great, which is exactly what we're at right now. So that's why the hawk cycle comes in and it destroys it, it you know, with the with the inflation and the 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 um the the hyperinflation and the deflation and it just destroys everything so that rebirth can happen and Everyone can kind of tighten their belts and go on a diet, a monetary diet, if you were. And banks' balance sheets get cleaned out, and, and it's like flushing the system full okay. of crap. Essentially, All right. Is what we're talking about. So that's where we are now. We are entering a hawk cycle, sort of, but we're kind of not because the thing is, is we had the crash. The, the stock market crashed. It said, okay, hawk cycle, here we come. But then the Fed went in and it put us on life support because, you know, it turned off the economy. And it put us on life support. So we're kind of in no man's land right. right now. We're not in the hawk cycle. We're not in the serpent cycle. We need to let nature take its course, essentially. And and unfortunately, go through that crash so that we can have rebirth and things can okay. get better. So my wife and your husband both think we have other things to do today. So And we've been, we've been going uh -huh. for about an hour. So I want to thank you for coming on and, and chatting with me. Thank you. Do you for have any last minute thoughts you want to share? about either Tesla or Bitcoin? Well, I, I think I'm gonna say, share a macro thing. I, I just think that, you know, everyone here who's listening in is obviously interested in tech. And, you know, tech is the future. We're entering a, we are in a digital age. Be that with Tesla, be that with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. And I think that people get so caught up in their camps of what's right and wrong that they don't look at the bigger picture and see how, you know, I think we're, we're going to really enjoy, we're not going to enjoy obviously what's going to happen with the stock market and, you know, with our GDP shrinking and, and, and perhaps our, even our own bank accounts. But tech in general, I think we're going to enjoy what we're going to see to come. I think, you know, there are going to be huge developments in Tesla. There's going to be huge developments with cryptocurrency. There's going to be huge developments in uh, computational bio. And, you know, lives will be saved through, you know, 
uh, biotech and we'll be going to space and you know putting up more satellites and things so in terms of tech as a whole it's going to be a fun ride to cool. watch all right thank you heather for coming on h bomb uh, thank you thank all for you, thank Warren. you all for watching this is my Thank best you. live stream ever heather 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 this is my best okay. live stream Glad. ever ever heather thanks to you um thank and you. i will see you again soon okay see you thanks, again everybody. soon take care thank you bye